Amen, church. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord an applause this morning. He deserves it. <laughs> Happy Advent Sunday to you. Happy Christmas Eve, uh, Eve. Um, uh, you know, getting ready for Christmas Eve service and, and getting ready for Christmas tomorrow. Everybody know what they're going to get for Christmas? Anybody care? Wow. Okay. All right. So much for my uh, monologue there. We'll just go right on. And today we're talking about hope. So I hope you get what you want. And maybe I don't hope you get what you want. I don't know. I'm not really sure where that is. We have been looking over the last couple of weeks about just how the reason we have for hope. And the hope that we have, that we need to have, and we need to recognize that we have. And we've talked about hope um, and the reason for hope in, um, in a variety of subjects today. One more as we close this out. We've talked about hope because God knows when to show up. We've talked about hope that God knows when to speak up. Last week I shared with you that, uh, that we have hope because God knows how to hold us up when he calls us to do something. And today I, we speak about hope in the issue that God knows how to offer himself up. So all these things that God has done for us, all these things that we have, the reason we have hope is that God has done these things for us. And today is no, no exception. And so I draw your attention back to the Christmas story, Luke chapter, chapter 2. Turn there, if you will, with me. And we'll read just briefly out of, the, out of the story about just God knowing when to offer himself up. And it starts pretty early on in, in Luke's gospel, in fact. John's gospel is a little bit different, but it starts right from the beginning that God showed up and God offered himself up. So get yourself in a mindset right there, and, uh, and let's look at a couple things. I'm going to give you five things real quick that you don't need to write these down. I just, want to, I just want you to know the map and the road map where I'm going. Five things this morning that I'm going to talk to you about, at least touch on, as we spend some time in God's Word, that, that the created Adam and Eve got kicked out. The Creator, Jesus, came in. We all get invited back in. God gives really good gifts. And then, finally, what can you give to him today? Those are the five things that I'm going to cover over the next 55 minutes. Didn't even phase you, did it? All right, I'm going to try to do it in 30. So, just so you know. I fear, though, that as, as we talk about these things, we look into God's Word, and maybe this morning you're kind of there because we get so wrapped up into the, to the, to the commercialism of Christmas. I'm not going to talk about that, but, but there's a truth here that we are ever increasingly taking Christmas for granted. In fact, the farther we get away from the cross and the resurrection, you understand sometimes here we are 2,000 years plus and, and, and we're going, man, is God real? Is God really there? And we've, and, we've, and we've drifted, if I may, and, and we, we recognize it, and our culture has now just become to ignore the whole idea of Jesus and his birth, while others only briefly pause to consider the ramifications of his incarnational sacrifice before we open presents, eat a meal, watch football games, right? Even those of us who are the most devoted, if I may, call on him all too easy and can overlook so simply the price that was paid 2,000 years ago for you and for me as we talk about the reason of hope. But if there were another way, if there were another way for Jesus to save lost souls, don't you think Jesus would have, saved, would have done it? If there was another way, he was the only baby in all of human history that knew life and death before his birth. And he'd do it all over again if it was just for you. Just for you. So, the beauty of it is that we're all here and all humanity was included in this divine plan. And so in Luke chapter 2, 
we read the, the, the first seven verses, it says, in those days Caesar Augustus, who, not, I'll just add that, who wanted to be God, who felt like he was God, and therefore he put himself above everybody else, was to take a, a, a census of the Roman, entire Roman world. Verse 3, and everyone went to his own town to register. But Joseph also went up to the town of Nazareth, from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the lineage of David. And he went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. And she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was simply no room for them in the inn. We read a little bit farther, as you, as you heard from the Advent reading, the angel said to them, don't be afraid, don't be alarmed, don't be worried. I bring you good news. That will be for all the people, and here's why I know we're included. For all the people, uh, today in the town of David, a Savior will be born to you, the Messiah. The Messiah. The Redeemer, the Deliverer. So I, I would think that we all need to be thankful today for salvation. So turn the person around you and say, I am thankful for your salvation. Go ahead, it's all right, you can say it. I'm pretty sure you're not lying at this point, simply because the, the, the alternative is, is, would be you turning to them and saying, I'm so glad you're going to hell. Right? But we're not going to say that because we're glad for their salvation. Right? Paul reminds us that God demonstrated his own love for us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Our salvation, our salvation through grace that we don't deserve, but Jesus comes and brings us this great grace. But did he come for more than that? Can I, can I just talk to you this morning maybe about one step away from salvation? Maybe that step a little bit higher on the scale of why we celebrate this day that's going to happen tomorrow. Why we celebrate the, the birth of Jesus. While salvation should be enough, and it is enough. The very fact that we have entrance into eternity with God, it should be enough. But I wonder if there's just not more. Now, I'm not, I'm not thinking outside philosophically at all. I'm thinking here's some theology that we need to anchor ourselves into. The Apostle Paul tells the church at Corinth, he's in the second letter, he said, and this is all from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ. And he gave us, therefore, this ministry of reconciliation. In five, verse, chapter 5, verse 19, it says that God was reconciling the world to himself in Jesus. Let me just, let me just give you the simple version of that. And God was bringing everybody back in through his son in the manger. There's something more about just celebrating this manger baby. There is something more about salvation. And so all, the greatest reason I think maybe today that we're overlooking, oftentimes do overlook, is far more than just fire insurance far more than just simply the salvation that we get, but the very fact that God knows how to offer himself up, and he came in the form of a baby in a manger to offer himself to us that we might be reconciled back to him, that we might be able to walk with him, know who he is. That's the simplicity of our story. That the greatest reason for the, the manger is that God wanted to reveal to, to all humanity who he was. We stop oftentimes just salvation. This morning, we have reasons to hope because God offered himself up that we might know him intimately. More than just being saved, more than just being able to say, I'm glad for your salvation, but the very fact that God, you get to know him, and you get to walk with him, 
And I know we need a Savior. Absolutely we do. In fact, the law teaches us. Let me just step aside here for a second. The law teaches us that we can't hold the law. So when you read the Old Testament and you understand that, my goodness, I can't even keep any of these Ten Commandments. That was the whole point. The whole point was to show you that you can't keep them. This is God on his level. And so what God did was show us and try to explain to us that we needed a Savior because we cannot be perfect. And so salvation was so important, but the beauty of it is is that God said, I, I'm going I'm to show up, I'm going to offer myself up as a baby and become flesh, incarnate. One of the only few words that I learned in my time, 32 years in Arizona, carne asada, meat, meat. Incarnation, meat, Jesus came to become meat flesh and blood, that we might live and see him as he walked and as he shared. We get to see and know God through Jesus. We get to understand a little glimpse of what God looks like. That was what was presented to us in the manger. More than just the salvation, but the very fact of God born to you this day was God that you get to see him, that you get to walk with him, that you get to know him. John the Baptist, about the time Jesus was going to be baptized, 30 years into his life already, John the Baptist is there in the Jordan River, and, and he looks up and says, the next day John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and said, look, look, I could stop right there and let's just preach a message and have church. Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Don't let that brush by very quickly. First off, look. Look and see Jesus, who not only takes away the sins of the world, but what that means to you is that he reconciles us back to God. He reconciles us. He brings us back together to know and to have that intimate relationship with the living God. Jesus in the flesh, John said, God in the flesh. Let's see him as he is, as he gets to see us. So it's important about the sins of the world, absolutely. What's the big deal? Well, you got to go back to Genesis. Because in Genesis, remember what happened? Adam and I, Eve got kicked out. And they got kicked out because they sinned and they disobeyed God. And as they disobeyed God, guess what? You and I didn't get to walk in the, in the Garden of Eden. Doesn't that just kind of tick you off? Right? Oh, we don't think about that, do we? Had it not been for Adam and Eve, here's the theology. Had it not been for Adam and Eve, we would have never been separated from the Garden of Eden. Right? And their sin, we'd, we'd still be there. Maybe we'd be having church today there. Uh, just let that sink in for a moment. They got kicked out, so guess who else got kicked out? You and I. So how do we get back and how do we have that relationship? Remember, they walked among the cool of the day in the garden like we're walking amongst the, these beautiful poinsettias today. And they talked with God and they had a relationship with God and they enjoyed God and God enjoyed them. Now, doesn't that kind of tick you off a little bit more now that I'm explaining it? So how we lost that, that, that time where we had that intimacy with God. So Jesus gives us the reason to hope because we get to walk with him again because he offers himself up in the manger. He didn't forget about his humanity. He didn't forget about his creation. Instead, he says, I'm going to invite you back in. And so Jesus comes as a baby. God comes down from heaven to earth as a baby in a manger and invites you and me back in. That's the significance. Once we've been expelled out of Eden, now we're invited back into the kingdom of the living God. 
that we too again will have that, that wonderful time with the living God. It's a powerful theology. It's a beautiful re reality for us who believe, who have accepted Jesus Christ, that we're invited back in, not just to see the manger, not just to see the cross, not just to see the, the, the empty tomb, but to experience the living God again. So this Christmas event that we're celebrating is an invitation to all to come back, come back, come back in. At least for those who will believe. God became human, born in a manger, born to a virgin, dwelt among us, walked among us, became that sacrificial offering, died on the cross, and on the third day he rose again, and he ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand to this day of the throne of God, and yet he's still coming back. He's still coming back. The Apostle Paul says it this way. I read this a couple weeks ago. Galatians chapter 4, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive adoption as sons and daughters. And because you are sons and daughters, God has sent forth his spirit into you, the spirit of his son, into your heart, so you can cry out to him, Daddy, Abba, Father, Daddy, Father, and therefore you're no longer a slave, but a son and a daughter. Heirs to the throne. Heirs through Christ Jesus. That's why we celebrate. That's why we have this day that we call Christmas. Not just to say, oh, we're going to celebrate and give gifts but that we might recognize, one, that God came. He offered himself up to you and to me, not just for salvation, but that we could walk with him again, that we could see and look in his eyes. And today you're saying, well, we really can't look into Jesus' eyes. I mean, he's not here. I get what you're saying. I understand that. But because of what Paul says, the Holy Spirit comes into your life, you have a closer, closer, closer person than a physical brother. Someone who knows you intimately. And that's why this John 3, 16 verse that you learned as a child is, is, makes such good sense now. When you recognize what God is doing and how he's bringing us back into the fold, you understand why John wrote this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But the world through him, might be saved, might be reconciled back to him. Back to that garden position. But God gave us a gift, and we celebrate that gift, and so much so that we celebrate it with giving gifts at this time of the year. Sociologists tell us there's three reasons that we give gifts. One, to confirm or recognize somebody's new identity. Think about that just for a second. I'll unpack it in a minute. To strengthen bonds between each other. And then also to direct somebody's future. And so interesting how it is that this very verse of John 3.16 kind of highlights that for us, if I may. And so God gave his son to give us what? A new identity. We celebrate a new identity. God gave us his son to strengthen our relational bonds. God gave us his son that our future might be directed or maybe redirected. Isn't that great? Let's talk about some more of this. Why we give gifts. We give gifts simply because we want to celebrate or confirm somebody. So that somebody does something great, we confirm them by giving gifts. They, re they graduate, they do various things. Or maybe we celebrate a new birth or a, a, a form of a new birth or a new transaction somehow that, we, that their life has changed. We go, man, we celebrate that with you. And, and here's a, some gifts and here's, a, here's a, a cake. We honor them. We honor milestones. We honor important special people. So God said, gives us his son to create in each one of us a new identity, equally a new identity. No longer slaves to sin. No longer slaves at all. 
Not from the fall, not from what Adam and Eve created that was handed down through all the generations, but now a sonship, a co-heir with Jesus. A co-heir, reconciled back in. And we celebrate it by giving gifts. And we also see it in the way that, we, that, that it is that we give gifts to strengthen the bonds between people. Write that down, fill that in. It's our way of, of saying, I love you, honey, or to your spouse. Or to say nice things as you give them gifts, right? If you, haven't, if you lost that practice, you might want to pick it up. We give gifts to appreciate people. We give gifts uh, as friendships. Sometimes you just get a gift because you have who you are. And it's, the whole point is that we strengthen the bonds as we give gifts to each other. And isn't that Jesus? God said, I give you my son, why? That we might have that stronger bond with God. That God, as God invites us back in, we might go, okay, maybe there is something here. Maybe there is truth to this. Because what, that which was broken, because of rebellion, because of disobedience, Jesus is the gift to reconcile, to bring us back, to restore, to refresh, to give us that new direction. Because frankly, as I said earlier, all of us, all of us are bound bound to hell if Jesus doesn't step in and offer himself up and say father I will take on their sin and that all started at the manger that all started back there for us physically and then of course the last one there we give gifts to direct someone's future you know Maybe as they graduate, you want to help them and encourage them along with a car or whatever you want to give to them and help them have a better future. We want people to achieve success, so we give to them to help them along the way. We want to create avenues where, they, where they're going to live well, at least start out well. Isn't that what the Father did? As he gives us the gift of Jesus in a manger, he offers himself up eternally as well as physically. Certainly eternally, of course, we need to talk about that because eternal life, we, for all who believe, eternal life, to escape eternal damnation, to escape as well the evils of the world, absolutely. To rebuild the relationship with us, of course, but also to take hold of the kingdom where Jesus says, I give you now, I re you're reconciled to me through my son. Take hold of the kingdom today because the, Jesus said the kingdom of God is when? Now, now, not in heaven, not when we get there, not in paradise, but today, because he filled us with the Spirit, he walks with us, we know him, and you've experienced him, and you understand that God is real. Why? Because he speaks to your heart. And if he's real, then you understand that the kingdom is today. What a gift to impact our future, that we might have power and presence within us today, now, to know victory over sin that we don't have to give in because it can't, the devil has no power. To accept his invitation to be conquerors, more than conquerors, conquering evil, having victory today. Listen to what Paul tells the young Titus, the young preacher, and to the church, of course. When the goodness and the loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us. Not because of works we've done by us or in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal in the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out richly through Jesus Christ our Savior. So that being justified by his grace, we might become, here's the change again, more of the change, become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. I mean, it's, we could say that thank you, Lord, for, for giving us salvation, but thank you, Lord, for bringing me back into a life, back into a direction where I can be renewed and refreshed and I can have a new future because you, we, Jesus reconciled me back. He brought me back in. We were once kicked out. But now we're back. Assuming that you believe today. Assuming that you believe today. This is the future that he brought to you and to me. 
and it started in the manger in which we are to celebrate tomorrow. Once what seemed impossible for humanity to ever experience again, Jesus calls us back and says, come on, I invite you back in. The words of the angel say it well. Come. God gives you something beyond imagination for all people. And just so that you know it wasn't just for the Jewish people, don't forget, it was for us Gentiles too. God called from out, out way out of the, of the east. Whether they were a long lost tribe of, 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 of the time of Babylonian capture or whether they were just Gentiles like you and me, God calls us back in. He says it's for all people. So what should you do today? What should you do today? Well, I think of three things, again, just staying on that three. One, offer yourself as a gift to Jesus today. It's nice to go home, and tomorrow we're going to unwrap presents. Some of you are going to do it tonight. It's nice to go home and go, man, somebody thought of me. I got a gift. Woohoo! I wonder what, what, what God thinks when we leave him out. So maybe we should offer ourselves to Jesus today. Because God loves gifts. God loves gifts. You're not convinced. Say it to the person next to you. Let, hear it in your ears. God loves gifts. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. God loves gifts. God loves giving gifts. Give yourself to him today. Maybe you should work on your relationship. That whole idea that, that just being reconciled causes us to work on a relationship with, with him. To talk. To talk to him. To read about him. To spend time with him. Just to enjoy and build that relationship as he has given to us the, the clear pathway to achieve. I brought you back in. I invited you back in. Oh, pastor, you don't understand. I'm not a good person. Yeah, you're in a good company of bad people. And that's just not talking here. But across the globe, from the past to the future, God loves bringing bad people back in and, and bringing them and helping them and, and straightening them out. So if you think you're impossible to work on, let me just say this. God's cracked a lot harder nuts than you, trust me. Talk to him. Read with him. Spend time with him. And the third thing, maybe live for his kingdom. It's now. It's here. We live in it today. Live for the kingdom. Share it with others. Boast about it. Say how good your God is, how great he is. Look what he's done. He didn't just give us fire insurance for eternal damnation, but he brought us back in and said, I want to be with you. I have no idea why God wants to be with you. I know why he wants to be with me. But God said it's the divine plan for all people. So that must mean it includes you. Live it today. Live today for his kingdom. Jesus said, live today. Don't worry about tomorrow. Live for today. Enjoy the day. Enjoy the beauty of what I've created. Enjoy the people that I, that I put around you. Imagine this day that God placed people like this around you in your life. What a mistake that was, God. No. At just the right time, God knows exactly who you need. That's the kingdom today. And we get to share and bump elbows today because he could have put us in any other time period. But God thought of us today. Interesting thing about gifts, as I close. Interesting thing about gifts. They're not a gift until you take it. They're not a gift until you take it, until you grab onto it and say, it's mine. So the only way you're going to receive a real gift is that you take it. God's inviting you back in. God's calling you back in. He offered himself up that you might say, okay, God, let's talk. God gave you a gift. Will you receive his gift? Because his name is Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Not just for salvation, but for you to be reconciled to him. Let's bow our heads. 
I ask you this morning those questions. Would you be willing to give yourself back to the Lord today? Would you be willing to say, yes, Lord Jesus, I give you myself? I'm not asking you to unpack all that, that means. I'm just asking you to take a step of faith today and just simply say, Lord Jesus, I give you my life. I give you my life that I might be brought back in. Or maybe today, while your heads are bowed, you're thinking, I, I just need to recommit that to the Lord because I've kind of wandered away from it. No better time than today to say, Lord Jesus, here I am. Forgive me for forgetting about you. I want to embrace the kingdom again. Maybe today you've never accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. You've never said, God, come into my life. I'm going to ask you to say it now. God, come into my life. God, come in and be Lord and Messiah. Be the Savior of my life. Be the Redeemer of my life. I receive you as Lord, as the God of my life. There will be no others. I believe that Jesus died on the cross and that he rose again. And I'm going to keep believing that. And I will not quit. Receive me, Lord Jesus. And I just want to, as your head's bowed and your eyes are closed, I just want, if today you, raise, you made that prayer, you made that a reality for him. I'm, no one's looking. Would you just slip your hand up and say, Pastor Mike, I did, I said that prayer. Just slip your hand up. Amen. Good, good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Lord Jesus, I pray over these who just raised their hand. I pray over those who have today recommitted. They've been trusting you, Lord, but they've maybe forgotten. And maybe there's some that just, Lord, just need to rededicate today. I pray for everyone today. I pray for those who have come to know you, come to just believe in, Lord, just receive you into your, their heart. Lord, just I pray that you would strengthen them. I pray a shield about them. That the enemy would not attack. The enemy would not come near them. Lord, give them a time where they can just spend with you. Strengthen their heart. Let people encourage them. I pray, Lord, they would today say to someone they love, I made this commitment. I made this step of faith. Oh, Lord, empower them, Holy Spirit. As you, as you begin to well up within them, let their spirit ignite with fire from on high. Let that joy begin to spread. And like the shepherds did, they couldn't contain it. They heard the good news, and they went out and they told others. Empower them so, Holy Spirit. And for those today, O oh God, who have made just that rededication, that, that, that time, I pray that they would not look at this as a, as a, as a simple thing, but Lord, that this would, again, strengthen them like, like it did in the time of the believers in Pentecost where the fire Holy Spirit, you, you rushed in and you consumed them and all that they were about and they began to share to others and people, friends, neighbors heard the news and got saved, got brought back in. Oh God, I thank you today that we could spend this time hearing from your word. Now, oh Lord, unleash us this beautiful Christmas Eve day into tomorrow, this beautiful Christmas day. Oh God, unleash us that we might be reckless for the kingdom and live, live the beautiful joy of our Savior. May we be imitators of him. This I ask, this day, in Jesus' name, amen.